Hello and welcome ladies and gents to Always Busy Gaming, your destination for discovering new and exciting games. If like me you have played the previous Age of Empires and are excited to jump into AoE 4, then let me tell you 15 things that are new and different in this latest installment of our beloved franchise. They have completely changed the look and feel of the UI and have incorporated multiple quality of life features such as a notification for when your allies are attacked, a counter for idle villagers, a count of villagers on each resource and a resource gathering rate which can be viewed by hovering over the resource. There are also different panels showing the buildings available in each age. These features make life much more easier for casual players and reduce the skill gap that existed in previous installments. If you've played AoE 2, then you know how much people pay attention to reduce villagers bumping into one another. In AoE 4, there is negligible bumping and collision among villagers owing to the fact that they don't take up a tile space for themselves. This is not to say that dead animals don't take up space because you can have a maximum of 8 villagers collecting from a carcass. This tells us that the terrain in AoE 4 follows a square grid layout. You can notice this even with mills and farms where you can symmetrically fit 8 farms around the mill. Also, adjacent buildings have gaps between them now for units to pass through, so no more using houses as an early wall. For any veteran of the franchise, animals decaying after being killed was a massive feature to take into account and warranted micromanagement of villagers to maximize the food collected from the carcass. This is no more the case in AoE 4 as carcasses don't decay and remain forever. If you are wondering why, the answer is in the next point. Like before, you start every game with a scout but now the scout can be trained at your town center and costs just slightly more than a villager. There is also a new upgrade at the mill called Professional Scouts which allows your scout to kill deer and carry the carcass back to base so that your villagers aren't exposed to danger. There is an incredibly efficient way to do this and you can check out my video on this from the top right corner of your screen. I promise you this method will make your scouts the real MVP early game. Sheep are now herded to your scout and follow it across the map. They look funny galloping along at the same pace as a horse, but I am not complaining as it means that the sheep don't get stolen on their way back to base. Scouts also have a call out feature now where they scream out the presence of an enemy unit they come across. This serves as an alert for you to micromanage the scout out of danger as well as a heads up for information regarding the enemy. Now, towers can be inbuilt into walls and troops can be stationed atop them too. This gives a more authentic feel to siege battles. You can right click anywhere on the wall and troops climb up from the nearest gatehouse or tower. Also, troops can no longer attack walls. This just feels right as swords and arrows should not do damage to walls. What this means is that once walls are up, you need to bring siege weapons to punch a hole. However, there is now an upgrade at the blacksmith which allows your infantry to build siege towers and battering rams. Yes, both these siege engines are no more available at the siege workshop. There is a new feature in AoE 4 where certain buildings have a radius of influence which grants some bonus to other buildings within its radius. For example, British mills give a boost to the gather rate for farms around it and the Chinese Imperial Academy gives a boost to the tax goal generation of buildings in its radius. This mechanism didn't exist in prior installments and introduces an aspect of city planning into our beloved RTS franchise. You shouldn't just mindlessly throw down buildings any longer but plan out districts to avail the bonuses of such buildings. This is most prominent for the Chinese and Delhi Sultanate. The days of monks converting with a wave of their staff are over. Relic has ensured that monks can convert enemies only if they have a relic in hand. However, the conversions are now en masse with a huge area of effect but are a little difficult to pull off as it takes time and needs the monk to be in close proximity. To successfully execute this, one would have to engage the enemy and lock them in battle before casting the conversion. 
I see this mechanism being more used as a choke point entry denial tool which buys you a few seconds of breathing space while your enemy scrambles out of the conversion radius allowing you to gain an advantage in positioning to learn more about how to use the relic in battle click on the link in the top right corner of your screen certain units can now cast special skills or abilities during combat For example, the longbowmen, which are unique to the British, can learn abilities from the archery range, which, when used correctly, can turn the tide of battle. To learn how to use the longbow abilities as a combination, check out this video from the top right corner of your screen. Though currently it's just the longbows and the Khan of the Mongols that have special abilities, I can totally see the game developers introducing these two more units as the game grows. You can now multi-select troop production buildings and queue units distributively across them. If you play as the British, you can also have different kinds of buildings grouped together and queue up the multiple troops to have them auto queue at the correct buildings. It may now be smarter for British players to just assign a hotkey to all military buildings and queue the various troops required all from one screen. Many old timers might be really put off with this but it makes it much more easier for newcomers to bridge the skill gap. Castles are called keeps now and are no more the only point from which you can build unique units. In fact, now all unique units are available from the stables, barracks or archery ranges. Most civilizations can't even recruit anything at the castle. Castles are like glorified towers now. much less imposing as compared to AoE2 and should be used as locations to fight around for an extra edge in the engagement you can build emplacements to increase their damage output but castles by their lonesome cells are very easily brought down by massed troops there are now gaia markets on the map which can be traded with by both teams it allows for more options in a 1v1 game as well as allowing you to start trading early in a team game in case your allies aren't in a favorable position there is a new victory option in AoE 4 called sacred victory which can be achieved by capturing and holding all sacred sites on the map though not immediately understandable these sites also generate a small amount of gold constantly this option is helpful in case the enemy team is turtling and it is impossible to break through their lines Keep in mind though your monks can capture sacred sites only once you reach the castle age. There are quite a few changes to the distribution of technology across buildings. For example, the wheelbarrow upgrade available at the town center in Age of Empires 2 is now found at the mill. The mining technology is saved for both gold and stone and instead of upgrades for each class of the army, upgrades at the blacksmith now affect ranged and melee, defense and attack values. There are also unique bonus tech available for each civilization to favor a different playstyle. Instead of aging up by a research at the town center, you now age up by building landmarks with villagers. Like AoE 3, you get a choice between two options while aging up, but now the time taken is no more fixed. It depends on the number of villagers you have assigned to building that landmark. Though this frees up your town center to produce more villagers, it does tie up your already available villagers who could have been collecting resources. I like the fact that at least you have the flexibility of prioritizing the building to fit your plans. It is important to note that now the victory condition is to destroy your enemy's landmarks. Landmarks can be rebuilt now and if you destroy all of an opponent's landmarks, they are eliminated irregardless of whether they have an town center. hidden in some corner pumping out villagers this adds an element of spreading out your landmarks instead of clumping them together so that if the enemy does break in you don't get eliminated in one go okay i saved the best for last remember in aoe 2 when farms needed to be reseeded and cost wood every time this is no more the case as farms give you an infinite amount of food with a one time investment of wood This is in my eyes the biggest change that AoE 4 has implemented as you are no more dependent on wood to ensure the supply of food late game. This may seem like a shocker to most old timers but AoE 4 has a lot more of free food available than any previous installment. So investing in farms too early would lead to a massive opportunity cost of infrastructure which could have otherwise been built with the same wood. 
AOE 4 is designed to be a much faster paced game as compared to AOE 2 and 3 and the complex relationships between many things have been removed. From my understanding, the goal is not to draw players from its previous franchises but to attract new gamers who need not have to go through a steep learning curve to jump right into battle. Whether this breaks the legendary balance of AOE 2 or reinvents the wheel for the franchise can only be known in the times to come. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you think I have missed out on any point of how AOE 4 is different from previous games of the franchise, then mention it down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, then smash that like button and please do share it with your friends who are interested in the game. If you would like to watch more AOE 4 content, then consider subscribing to my channel because that would mean the world to me. This is Ashes Bashes signing off. Until next video, game on.